Hey folks, welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel. Today we're talking about pools and specifically above ground pools. I'm gonna talk about our pool, we've had it for five years, how we like it and help you make the decision whether you wanna get an in-ground or an above ground pool. Stay tuned to the very end. We're also gonna talk about how much one of these actually will cost you. And I'm also gonna show you some ways that you can save money on different kinds of pools. Now, obviously we've had this pool for five years and I do like this pool. So I'm a fan of above ground pools, but that doesn't mean I'm also not a fan of in-ground pools. I actually grew up with an in-ground pool and had a great childhood in that pool. But when it came time for us to put in this pool, it was the debate between above ground and in ground pools. And there is a pretty big cost difference and we're gonna to get to that at the end. But right now let's talk about the pros and cons of an above ground pool. Now this pool doesn't have a shallow end, it's a one depth pool. And this is the deeper of the two. When we put this one in, we did opt for the deeper one because my daughter was already tall enough that she could keep her head above water standing on the bottom. Now we did run into the issue that some of her friends weren't that tall yet. So they did have to kind of hold onto the side, have a parent in the pool or hold onto a fun noodle. So that is something to kind of consider is that you are gonna be limited to one depth of pool. Now, most folks will list the biggest con as the appearance. And you can see here, I did wrap ours in bamboo to give it a little bit more of a natural look, but there really isn't much escaping the fact that it looks like you have a giant water tank in your backyard. Now, a lot of people have done some really creative things building decks. You can actually get above ground pools that you can dig partially into the ground. And we'll talk about that and how you can actually add an deep end to your pool in a little bit. But the difference between above ground and ground pools, the first one is gonna just be the cosmetic thing. Now, in addition to the cosmetic thing, the pool here is pretty tall. And I'm gonna show you from a seating position across my yard what I can see. Now, if I'm sitting here on my patio, that's the view of my pool. And the big downside to that is I have kids and my kid has friends over. And it's very hard to keep an eye on them because you can see until I'm standing up completely, I can't actually see the surface of the water. So if you do have kids, that is something to consider. Now, we did put a security camera in the backyard that does face the pool, but I would never consider that an alternative to keeping an eye on your kids. So that is one thing to consider is how well will you be able to view the water of the pool while your kids are in it if that's a safety concern for you. Another thing is how you get in and out of the pool. There are all sorts of different ladders and step configurations. We went with this one. This was the ladder that was basically the kit ladder. If I had to do it over again, I would splurge and spend a few more dollars. They do have ones that are more of stairs. And then when you get onto the entry side of the pool, it does have a regular ladder that comes in there all the way to the bottom, which is nice, but they do have actual pancake steps. And the nice thing about those steps is it does give you somewhere to sit especially a kid when they're in the pool. With that, let's also talk about depth. Now, most of these pools are going to be one depth fits all. Now you can actually, with some of the liners, dig in a deep end and have a shallow end and a deep end, but you do have to kind of decide at the time that you're putting it in how deep you want your shallow end. Most above ground pools do come with some sort of a skimmer and the skimmer is a great feature because it keeps the surface of the pool free from debris. Now you can see down there in the bottom of the pool, we have Wanda and Wanda is our pool vacuum. Now I've got a video all about Wanda down in the description below. You can check that out. I would never own a pool without some sort of a pool vacuum. You get dirt and grit and leaves and things like that all over the bottom of the pool. And you can see here, the bottom of my pool is completely clean because I've got Wanda. Doing that with a net would take hours. So the $150 or so that Wanda costs is a good investment. Now, some of the smaller, less expensive pools, and I've got a picture of the one that we put in a couple years ago right here. Um, this one was our first pool. We got this just for the kids to splash around in. And I'm going to talk about these a little bit later, but some of these don't have skimmers. They just have an inlet and an outlet, but they're smaller, so they're easier to take care of. Now, in a little bit, we are going to talk about those pools, the Intex pools, the ones that you can get on Amazon and Walmart and Target, and what I think of those. And it's actually probably going to surprise you. Now, while you're watching the video, be sure to check out down in the description below because I do have links to this pool and the other pools that I'm going to mention in the video and the other equipment that I'm going to mention in the video so you can get an idea of exactly what everything is going to cost you and you'll also be able to see your different options. Now, moving over to the filtration side of these, the above ground filters and the in ground filters are pretty much the same. Now, you will get an option down here. You can see the pump that I've got going on here. You will get an option for how big of a pump you want. I would always advise going with the biggest pump your pool can handle. You'll never regret having too much pump, but you will regret not having enough. And when you're spending the money to do it, you might as well spend the extra to get the larger pump. The price difference between this pump and the smaller pump for me was $50, so totally worth it. The other thing with your pumps is a lot of them are basically plug into the wall. You can install one of these timers and that way your pumps will kick on automatically for a given amount of time each day. It makes it a lot easier than having to remember to go out and flip your pumps on and off. 
Now we get to talk about maintenance and pool chlorine. So chlorine's not the only thing you're gonna have to throw in your pool. There are other chemicals as well, but this is kind of the basics. We've got chlorinating liquid, and that's what I use to get everything balanced. And then I have the tablets, and the tablets I put in the float, and that keeps the chlorine levels where they're supposed to be. Now this right here is a bare minimum test kit. This is the minimum you need to keep your pool balanced. There are bigger ones that have a lot more stuff in them. You can uh, test more things, but the bare minimum you're gonna need is a chlorine, and a pH. And you need to get both of these balanced to keep your pool water looking like that. Now I usually test my pool water two times a week and I make sure everything is balanced. And I also check the chlorine float to make sure the pool is getting enough chlorine. This is probably the best thing you can do to keep your pool maintained. If you keep the chlorine levels correct and your pool parameters in check, you won't have to deal with algae and doing all the algicides and stuff like that in the pool. I do have videos if you make a mistake and your pool water does turn green, I have videos that'll show you how to get your pool water looking just like this. And those are also in the description below. I also love using these. These are the solar covers. They look like bubble wrap. And these do a couple of great things for the pool. Now, the first thing, I live in a drought area, so water usage is very important. And these do a great job in preventing evaporation when they're on the pool. If I leave this on the pool, I really don't lose any water to evaporation. Uh, so that's a big help. The other thing it does is because it limits its exposure and, uh, and air transfer, it also helps with your chemicals. If you put one of these on the pool, you're going to go through a lot less chemicals. Um, you still are going to lose chlorine. Chlorine breaks down with UV, but this does help a fair amount with that. And these also do a great job keeping your pool clean in the summertime because stuff falls on them. When you roll it up, you can get it out of the pool. The last thing this does, it keeps your water warm. If you'd like a warm pool, this is the thing for you. I've got a link down below for a solar heater that I actually made for the pool, but these do a great job. And I actually have to take this thing off in the summertime sometimes because the pool gets too warm. So that's something great to look into. I've got a link in the description for different pool covers. Now I mentioned earlier that this wasn't the first pool that we had and we did actually pick up a cheaper one. It was under $200. I don't remember the exact price and things have changed since then. Uh, but I put in a smaller one. It was a 10 foot round pool for the kids when they were really small. And I bought this thing thinking it would last me a summer and then it would wind up going in the trash. After all, it was an inexpensive pool. The thing did wind up actually last me three seasons and I didn't take it down in the winter time. Um, it comes with an inexpensive filter and you can set it up on pretty much any level piece of ground. But that pool was well worth every penny I spent on it. I would recommend it to anybody with small kids. Just always remember if you put a pool in your backyard, you're putting a safety hazard in your backyard and it does on you, the parent, to make sure your kids are safe. Now maybe a pool is too big for you or too expensive for you, or maybe you just want warm water. Uh, there is also a great option for that. Above ground jacuzzis are awesome, but if you're looking for an inexpensive option, my brother has a review on his channel. Go check that out. It's for the Coleman Above Ground Spa. It's actually an inflatable spa. He's had this thing for several years now and it's still doing great. So be sure to go over to his channel, check that out and throw him a subscribe and let him know what you think of that jacuzzi option for your backyard. One thing to consider when you're deciding where you're going to put your pool on top of it needing to be nice level ground is what's next to it. You can see here I have these citrus trees and that tree at least does tend to dump leaves into the pool. So where you're putting it is important. But something to also think about is with an above ground pool, because it's not at ground level, I don't have as much of a leaf problem because things don't blow across the yard into it. They have to actually fall into it. So I find much less debris in this thing compared to the pool that we had growing up, which was an in-ground. So speaking of that installation, let's talk about the cost of installation. Now I've had this pool longer than I've had this channel. So unfortunately I don't have video footage of it going in, but the most important thing to remember is level your ground. If the bottom isn't level, the top isn't level. And not only do you have unlevel water, but it could also cause structural problems to the pool. Now you can hire a professional to install one of these things. And I've heard that ranges between 500 and thousand dollars, depending upon where you are. So that's an expense to think of. The other thing to think of is electrical. These things should have their own dedicated circuit to run on and that's going to cost you about 500 to yeah, about $500 depending upon who you hire if you don't have the skills to put in that circuit yourself. Now that we're on the topic of money let's talk about how much one of these things cost to put in and how much it costs to maintain. Now the numbers that I'm about to give you are for an above ground pool like mine, which is made by Doughboy. It's a hard sided pool, but I am going to show you the bargain deals at the very end of all of this. So a pool kit's going to cost you between two and $5,000. That's for my size pool, the bigger, the more expensive, but that's not going to come with the pump and filter. You're going to have to add that for about 400 to $600. 
Plumbing fittings to get it all hooked up is going to run you about 100. The underlayment and sand you're going to need is going to be 100 to 200, depending upon what you have on hand. Electrical, 100 bucks if you can do it yourself, just for the materials, or up to 500 if you're going to have to hire an electrician. And then, of course, there's the installation cost. It could be as cheap as pizza and beer for some friends, or up to 500 bucks if you need to have a professional come in and help you out. Now that you got the pool put in your yard, there's some extra stuff you're going to have to purchase. The pool sweeps and nets, you're going to want those to keep the pool clean. Those are going to run you about 200 bucks. Chemicals and test kits for my pool are running me about 150 a year, but depending upon your pool size, it may be more. I like pool covers, those are about 100 bucks, and the electrical for my size pool is about 100 bucks a year. And again, if it's a bigger pool, the electrical is probably going to be more. And now for the bargain approach. And you notice I call it the bargain approach and not the cheap approach because cheap makes it sound like it's not quality. The Intex above ground pools, I love those things. We've had them and I have a lot of friends that have had them and they've all had great luck. Thousand dollars, as cheap as a hundred bucks. And it comes with everything except for the underlayment. It even comes with your pumps. And some of them even come with starter chlorine. And of course that Coleman spa we showed you earlier. Those are great. If you want an above ground spa, you can get into one for as cheap as 300 bucks. Go check out my brother's video and subscribe to his channel. It's down in the description below. He'll tell you all about it. So I hope this video helped you out, maybe helped you make a decision. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about pools or what you're planning on doing. Hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot more awesome content just like this coming your way. And then of course, thanks for watching.